And now for a slavery special. It's time to talk slavery! So, we've had slavery in the Americas since we came over from Europe in the 1600s. Recently, though, the opposition to slavery in the North and div the division between the nation's regions over the issue of slavery has escalated to an incredibly high level, due mainly to the differences in industrialization and development. Right. The North developed a lot of cities and factories, and was very progressive in its economics and labor systems. The South, on the other hand, has remained very agriculturally oriented and organized into plantation communities as opposed to the industrial cities of the North. These differences account for the South's increasing need for slavery, as well as the North's shift away from it. The U.S. was constitutionally obliged to end participation in the international slave trade in the year 1808, but the domestic slave trade remained booming throughout the first half of the 19th century. The Northerners had become increasingly independent of the need for slaves, perfectly countered by the South's rapidly growing demand for them. Following the invention of the cotton gin by Eli Whitney especially, the South's cotton and sugar plantation owners could not seem to get enough slaves. They bought slaves sold to them by Northerners for whom it was simply economically profitable to sell. This migration, regardless of growing abolitionist sentiments, created a clear regional division between states who could easily dispose of slavery and states that could not survive without it. However, the abolitionist cause was strengthening rapidly in the North. Key figures such as Frederick Douglass, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and William Lloyd Garrison stirred strong abolitionist sentiments that created strong opposition to this westward expansion of slavery in the territories acquired by Mexico. Slavery as a political issue has been blatantly ignored in attempts to avoid the conflict that, in reality, everyone knew would arise between the northern and southern states. Neither major political party had taken a stance on the issue for exactly this reason, but that became more and more difficult to maintain with the growing northern opposition to admitting new territories as slave states. Prominent politicians developed many compromises and legislations in order to avoid conflict. Examples are the Missouri Compromise, which dealt with the balance between slave and free states, and the Kansas-Nebraska Act as well. The most controversial was the Compromise of 1850, which included a new Fugitive Slave Act involving federal action in retrieving runaways. This compromise served to mollify the South, but absolutely enraged the North. Tensions increased between the two regions, and South Carolina, even by 1850, said that there was not the slightest doubt that their state would secede. It was only a matter of time. How could we come to this? It's time for a commercial break! WKRZ! Stay tuned for more WKRZ! In the morning! Hey folks, are you wondering who to vote for? Confused, don't know what to do? Don't know whom to support? Join the Democrats and we'll tell you what to do. Do you believe in slavery, low tariffs, king cotton? If you answer yes to any of those questions, that means you should be with us. If you want to protect your pockets from the unionist pickpocketeers, then you need to act fast. Head to South Carolina and support the secessionist effort. Remember, ask for Calhoun's house. Tell your friends. This message has been approved by the Democratic Party. We're back from our commercial break. WKRZ! It's Quick Sketch with Becky Gamble. So, let's recap what's been happening at Fort Sumter for the past couple of months. Major Robert Anderson, a commander in the U.S. Army, was positioned at Fort Moultrie. However, he decided to move his troops to Fort Sumter because Fort, Fort Moultrie was too close to those rowdy Southerners who had just seceded. A well-fortified island in the middle of the bay seemed like a much smarter idea in terms of defense. Since South Carolina had seceded and Fort Sumter was a valuable piece of federal property, President Buchanan was left in a sticky situation. Negotiators from South Carolina had recently arrived in D.C. to make some demands to negotiate a peace deal with the newly Confederate state and the United States. Their top demand from Buchanan was to remove troops from the fort. Buchanan decided not to give in to this request. To try to appease both North and South, Buchanan sent a merchant ship called the Star of the West, filled with food for the fort. Some of the surrounding cannons fired on the Star of the West, but missed the ship. South Carolina waited for Buchanan to respond, but nothing happened. Then, in March of 1861, Lincoln was sworn in. He made four main points in his inauguration speech. First, 
that secession was illegal and unjustified. Second, that the seceded states were still in the Union. Third, that no federal troops would be sent against the states, nor would the federal government do anything to interfere with slavery where it already existed. Fourth, that the federal government would hold all federal property in the seceded states. Then, Anderson sent a message to Lincoln telling him that the fort was low on food. Lincoln sent a message to the governor of South Carolina telling him that they were sending another ship. He told him that if the ship was not fired upon, they would bring only supplies and food from the ship. If the ship was fired upon, they would unload troops, weapons, and food. Lincoln told Anderson to hold on to the fort as long as possible. Then, the South had to decide what their next move was. Jefferson Davis gave orders to P.G. 2 Beauregard to resist all supplies and to demand immediate surrender of the fort. The representatives of Beauregard went over to the fort and gave a formal order of surrender. Anderson refused, and they were fired upon an hour later. The rest is history. Now all we need to find out is whether Lincoln's orders for 75,000 troops will affect the remaining states in the Union. The Confederate states may have end up being... Mississippi. Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina, Florida, Texas, North Carolina, Arkansas, Virginia. And that's the end of Quick Sketch. I'm Becky Gamble. Good night and good luck. And so then the priest says to the rabbi that, oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> some breaking news. Oh, this you is pretty catastrophic. We have breaking news just in from the border states. It seems that they have seceded from the Union as a result of the conflict at Fort Sumter. Oh, oh my gosh, this is, this is huge. Um, let me see this. Seems like they're upset over Lincoln calling for 75,000 troops and they're raising up their militias out of nowhere. That's not, that's not so good for us. Hey you, are you white? No. This video has been brought to you by <laughs> Becky! <laughs> Hello, I'm Becky Gamble. And I'm Hilary Stroud. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? That's my name. She's <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere. Shelter? Like when it says, well, at least they're not out in the cold, I have to then. We even let them get. W-G-R-Z!